thing about desert rigs is they always seem to be in a pretty good mood when they unload. A BSA 441 Victor. I had one of those things. It had to be one of the worst motorcycles ever made, at least for the desert. Into the first checkpoint, it's Mike Burke, one of the checkers. Everybody's wondering where he came from. Followed by his uh, buddy, Doyle Fields, another member of the checkers. Here was the original leader, Buck Smith. Followed by Gary Preston. Jan Roberts coming through. All getting their tank cards marked. Mike Burke has also passed away, along with his buddy Doyle Fields, across the dry lake, probably 100 miles an hour. We had like uh, 20 cameras covering this thing. We had them spread out on the first loop and then a plan to uh, move them so they could also get on the second film on the second loop. So we had a, effectively about 40 different camera locations. And of course the helicopter with Nelson Tyler and, and uh, Davy Jones, the pilot, who were just amazing what they could do. Buck Smith and Gary Preston. There goes J.N. Roberts on his Husqvarna, which was kind of a new motorcycle at the time for the United States. Turns out that Mike and Doyle had uh, taken a road and uh, cut the course, so they were eventually disqualified. It seemed like every desert race there'd be some kind of a bottleneck where everyone would get jammed up. That was kind of part of the deal. The amazing thing about some of these bottlenecks where I never saw anybody get mad at each other. It was always like, uh, you know, you run into somebody or jam it, and they kind of look at you and go, are you having fun? Roberts wore uh, football shoulder pads. Nobody had any kind of armor they wore in those days. He also wore like uh, baseball catcher's knee pads, Buck Smith, flat tire. picking up the lime and making the corner. When you're going that fast, it's, it's, it's easy to miss some of the corners and miss some of the markings. Jan misses the corner and catches out of the corner of his eye and gets back on the course without losing much time. The 
desert racing back then was, it was pretty much virgin desert. It wasn't all whooped out. You could pretty much uh, run a desert race anywhere you wanted to. So that was part of the challenge for the different clubs was to, you know, find a new area and lay out a new course. Very much club oriented. There was like the checkers and the victors and the viewfinders and the shamrocks and most of them wearing their uh, colors of the club they were in. Some of the really great helicopter photography that was pretty darn new at the time. As I said before, you know, just hanging out the door of the helicopter with a handheld camera, it was shaking all over the place. Where Nelson and Davy Jones were just an amazing group of people or amazing team. They got so close to Jan one time, I think that they uh, he actually hit his. Uh, shoulder on the skid, like Burke with a flat, kind of poetic justice. Gary Preston followed by Whitey Martino. Malcolm Smith, Whitey and I went to the six day trials uh, when we were doing on a Sunday. And I think Whitey is uh, living in the uh, Sonoma County up in Northern California. Whitey Martino getting a little wheel adjustment. Brenda McClellan, our man in the pits. Jim, how's it going so far? Okay, everything's fine except for the front rim. Good luck. He hit a rock. Congratulations. Bob. It's rough. He says it's rough. He wants a cigarette. The gas is going to stand by for a fire. We're backing off now. He's getting a request for a cigarette, and there he goes. Number 